Hello everyone, I hope this video finds you well in this odd time. I just recently hit the 50 hour mark on my Massey Ferguson GC1723E tractor, so I thought I would go over the 50 hour maintenance schedule. I found it to be a good amount of work, and I thought having a good reference video could save people a lot of time and confusion. First I'd like to say that you can get all your Agco replacement parts, filters, and fluids from your local Massey Ferguson supplier, but I bought most of my supplies off of Amazon. I'll link as many items as I can below so you can find them and get them delivered right to your door. I'd also like to say that I did not use all of the specified Agco replacement filters and fluids. I did my research and found what I believe to be adequate substitutes for some filters and fluids. I'd recommend that you do the same to ensure that you are using proper parts and fluids for your tractor. Now with that being said, let's get started. Here is a list of everything that Massey Ferguson recommends doing for the 50 hour maintenance. The list includes changing the engine oil and filter, changing the hydraulic oil and filter, changing the front axle fluid, changing the fuel filter, checking all of the lights and flashers, checking the tire pressure and adjusting if needed, checking to ensure the wheel lugs are properly torqued, cleaning the air filter elements, inspecting the battery, checking if there is proper tension on the fan belt and adjusting if needed, greasing the entire machine, inspecting all of the fasteners and hardware, cleaning the transmission suction filter, and cleaning the radiator screen. I know it seems like a lot, but stick with me as we will go through each step in detail. To start, remove the drain plug located on the bottom of the transmission towards the right side. This will be about 3 gallons of hydraulic fluid, so be sure you have a big enough drain pan or else you're going to have a huge mess on your hands. When the transmission is empty, then you can move on to replacing the hydraulic filter. To remove the hydraulic filter, you will first need to remove the filter cover plate. I did not take a video of me removing it, but here is a video of it in place to give you an idea. There are just two bolts holding it in place. Once you have the cover out of the way, feel free to remove the filter. Ensure your drain pan is still in place as there will be hydraulic oil in the filter. Once you have the old filter removed, feel free to replace it with the new filter. I like to mark the filter with the date and hour so I can easily see when I replace the filter. To access the suction filter, you will need to remove the left wheel. Warning, if you have any type of rim guard or ballast in your wheel like I do, this will cause the wheel to be very heavy, so just be careful when removing it. After you remove the wheel, you will have a clear shot to the suction filter. Go ahead and remove the filter. Ensure you have your drain pan in place since there will be a residual hydraulic oil in the filter. When removing the filter, be careful not to lose the o-ring on the other side of the fitting. If it is not properly in place, it will cause a leak. After you clean the filter, slide it back into place. Make sure the o-ring on the other side of the fitting is seated properly to ensure no leaks. I recommend being easy when tightening this bolt as it did not feel very sturdy to me. I did not torque it down to any specific value. I went until it felt tight and checked for leaks afterwards. I did not have any leaks so I found it to be satisfactory. If you do not feel comfortable doing that, then I would recommend torquing it to the Massey Ferguson specifications. Once you have checked to ensure the plug and the filters are tight, you can then replace the wheel and refill the transmission. The transmission will take about 3 gallons of fluid. There is an indicator on the back of the transmission, but I found it hard to read. Once you have filled up the transmission, test all of the hydraulic functions and check for leaks. Once you have verified that everything looks good, you have then completed this step. Oh, one last thing that I forgot to mention at the beginning. Before you park your tractor, ensure that all the hydraulic parts are returned to home. This will ensure that all the hydraulic fluid will be drained and nothing is left in the parts themselves. To start, turn the lever on the top of the housing to turn off fuel flow. Then, remove the nut holding the casing to the housing. 
Once the nut is removed, the filter casing should come right off. Try not to spill much of the diesel fluid since the casing will have to refill after the new filter is installed. Remove the old filter and replace it with the new one. Then, replace the filter casing. You'll need to hold it in place while you screw the retaining nut on. It may be a little bit tricky, but stick with it and you will get it. I tightened this nut by hand until I felt it was tight enough. Lastly, return the fuel lever to the on position and turn the key to the on position. Allow the casing to fully fill with diesel. Once the casing is filled, start your tractor and check for leaks. Once you have ensured that there are no leaks, you have completed this step. If possible, park your tractor on level ground. Depending on how large your drain pan is, you may need to raise the front of your tractor. If you have a loader, you can use it to pick up the front of the tractor. Before you start draining the axle, I want you to notice that both sides are not identical. They both have a drain plug and a breather plug, but there is only one fill plug located on the left side. I did not realize this at first and it caused me to waste a bit of oil. Work on one side at a time. Remove the fill plug to allow for better drainage. Remove the drain plug and allow one side to fully drain. Once you have drained one side, move on to the other side. Once both sides are drained, ensure that both drain plugs have been replaced and are tight. To refill the axle, remove the breather plug on both sides. Begin refilling the axle through the fill plug. Take your time and add a little bit of fluid at a time. Wait for the fluid to go down into the axle and then continue to fill. This will take 4.2 quarts of fluid. Massey Ferguson recommends filling until the fluid is halfway up the axle shaft. Once you have reached this point, wait a few minutes as air will escape from the axle and the fluid level may drop. I had to fill and wait several times before the fluid level stayed at halfway. Once you are done, reinstall the breather plugs and the fill plugs and you are all done. I recommend coming back after a day or two and rechecking the fluid level in case any more air has risen to the top. In order to change the filter, I recommend raising the front loader on the tractor. Once that is done, pop the hood and secure it with the hood latch. Move the oil fill plug to allow for better drainage. Locate the drain plug on the bottom of the pan and drain the oil. Once this is complete, reinstall the plug. The oil filter is located on the left side of the engine. Remove the filter. Be sure you have your drain pan underneath the filter as it will drip oil. Reinstall the new filter. I like to mark my filters with the date and hour so it is easy to see when it was replaced. Fill the engine with 2.7 quarts of 10W30. Once you have filled the engine, start the tractor and check for leaks. This will complete this step. To begin, remove the strap holding on the air filter. Then unclip the two clips holding on the outer casing. Don't be afraid to maneuver the air filter as it's flexible and will not break. Once that is done, remove the air filter. Feel free to clean the air filter in whatever means works best for you. I have an air compressor so I use the air tool to blow out all the dust. Once you're done, replace the air filter. Ensure that it is secure. Then, replace the outer housing. There are multiple clips that can line up, so don't worry about getting it perfect. Secure the two clamps. Finally, replace the strap holding the whole air filter in place. And once you are completed, that is it. To inspect the battery, pop the hood and secure it with the hood latch. Check to make sure that both terminals are tight. If not, adjust if needed. The fan belt is located on the right side of the tractor. Check the tension. If it is not tight enough, use the bolt located on the alternator to adjust the tension. Just in front of the radiator, you will see a tab. 
Lift up on this tab and ensure that you clear the inlet hose. This will pull the radiator screen out of place. Once you have cleaned the screen, go ahead and reinsert it back in place. Again, watch out for the inlet hose. Go around the entire machine and ensure that all your hose fittings, all your hardware, and all your fasteners are tight. I know this is time consuming, but trust me, it's worth it. Go around to all the grease fittings and ensure that you properly grease each fitting. A good way to know that you have greased the fitting enough is that when you start to see the grease either come out of the fitting itself or in between the joint. Turn on your headlights and ensure that both headlights are functional. Then turn on your flashers and ensure that all of them work as well. Lastly, go around to all the wheels and ensure that they are properly torqued. I tightened them as best as I could and I felt that was adequate. Go around and check your tire pressure on both the front and the rear wheels. All the tires should be at 20 PSI. And with that, you're all done. Go ahead and enjoy your tractor for another 100 hours until you have to take care of the 150 hour maintenance. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video. I hope this can answer some questions you may have had. If I missed anything or was not clear on something, don't be afraid to ask in the comment section below and I will be sure to answer to the best of my knowledge. I'm going to link some videos from Massey Ferguson that I used to get part numbers and learn how to do this maintenance. If you found this helpful, please hit the like button, and if you want to watch more of my videos, click the subscribe button. I look forward to sharing my next video with you, and until then, take care and have a great day.